Hello and welcome back to your own channel Indian Defense Analysis where we bring to you all the latest development happening in the defense sector. The aerial combat challenges have evolved from a dogfight to beyond visual range combat and now electronic warfare. Be it F-35 or Gripen or Rafale, the secret of their success lies in better electronic warfare capabilities. As we all know that India is also working on its ambitious 5th plus generation fighter jet program MCA. While the indigenous engine remains the Achilles heel of the MCA, another important aspect of this program is electronic warfare suite. Before MCA, Tejas MK2 will enter into production which will be integrated with latest electronic warfare suites. The integration of Tejas MK2 with latest electronic warfare component will help to improve and prove the system's capability. But the question is, what electronic warfare suit is? What are its major components and where do we stand in this realm of technology? This video is all about exploring such questions. So let's get started. DARE is one of the DRDO's most low profile laboratories and also one of its most successful one. It has developed a self protection suite for aircraft under a program named Mayavi in collaboration with Israeli Elisra. Mayavi is designed to enhance survivability during deep penetration and actual combat. It includes a radar warning receiver RWR, missile approach warning MAW, and a laser warning receiver LWR system, infrared and ultraviolet missile warning sensors, self protection jammer, chaff, jaff, and flares dispenser, an electronic countermeasure suite, and a towed radar decoy TRD. Mayavi EW suite uh, was developed especially for teachers. However, it's highly unlikely that complete Mayavi suite will be integrated with Tejas MK1 due to space constraint. While there are so many components which form the part of electronic warfare suite, the two most important among them are self-protection jammer, SPJ ports and radar warning receiver RWR regarding which we will be discussing in today's video. Self-protection jammer is an electronic countermeasure system that jams the signal of hostile radar and thus provide protection to the mother aircraft. The jammer first detects the radiation of the enemy emitters and compares it with the integral threat library. If the transmission either is confirmed to be hostile or is an unknown threat, the jammer radiates and jams the enemy receivers and thus attempts to protect the aircraft. At the same time, an RWR system also detect the radio emissions of radar system, but their primary purpose is to issue a warning when a radar signal that might be a threat is detected. Both the systems work together to provide hostile radar detection and jamming. The development of indigenous self protection jammer pod and radar warning receiver has been a pretty interesting one. The Su-30 MKIs were integrated with Russian SAP-518 jamming pods which is extremely effective against radars and EMRF missiles in its operational band of 5 to 18 gigahertz. However, it had certain limitations. They were very heavy and were limiting the flight envelope of Su-30 MKIs when fully loaded. Further, Russia was unwilling to share the source codes that could have helped to integrate indigenous RWR with SAP-518 pod. Indian Air Force has to supplement SAP-518 with Israeli ELL-8222 Airborne Self-Protection Jammer Pods, which now have been offered with wide ELL-8222 WB Pods. This has led to the development of Self-Protection Jammer Pods by DARE, which can interface with indigenous RWR system. DARE has developed a high-band jammer HBJ pod for Su-30 MKI aircraft to be carried at wingtips. The new indigenous pod is expected to have better integration with RWR on board than Russian SAP 518 pods. The HBJ pod currently has three major systems the integrated EW suit, active array phased transmit receive unit, and cooling system. An Indian Air Force Su 30 MKI pilot has also confirmed that the HBJ pods are a very promising system, and the best part of it is that Indian Air Force don't have to run to Russians if something doesn't work. There are no confirmed news on the integration of HBJ with Su-30 MKIs. However, its dummy trials were conducted back in 2019. At present, Indian Air Force could be using mix of jammers, which includes SAP-518 or Israeli Elta-EL-8222 
or HBJ. Dare has also started working on an advanced self protection jammer ASPJ, which will feature gallium nitride based solid state active electronic scan AESA jammer transmitters along with digital radio frequency memory DRFM. The DRFM jammers are known for severely degrading adversaries radars and missile seekers. ASPJ will also have three major components which are active array transmitter receiver unit ATRU, excited receiver processor and cooling system. ASPJ is going to be single pod unlike HBJ which is a dual pod system integrated at the wing tips of Su-30 MKIs. This pod is going to be the next generation pod for the upcoming 4.5th and 5th generation fighters of Indian Air Force. Talking about RWR systems, over the years, several radar warning receiver and electronic warfare systems such as Tempest and Tarang have been developed and inducted successfully by Indian Air Force. However, Tarang is an analog RWR which makes it difficult to detect low probability intercept LPI signals. DARE has further enhanced its RWR with the development of Truthi, which is a better digital RWR platform. Indian Air Force is planning to integrate all its Su-30 MKIs with Dhruti RWR. The project for the purchase of 125 DRWR-118 has been planned by Air Force. Dhruti is a six-channel digital RWR that not only offers a wide dynamic range and large bandwidth of detection, but also offers good sensitivity, selectivity and wide instantaneous bandwidth. Dhruti even works fine with the Russian SAP-518 jammers without causing any interference in its working. While Super Sukhoi upgrade seems to be too ambitious program at the moment due to the heavy cost involved in it, the upgrade of Su-30 MKI's electronic countermeasures capability is much needed move. The Air Force seems to be taking baby steps toward upgrading this component which seems to be wise at present situation. The development of these systems are important step towards developing a better and next generation electronic warfare suite which will be seen in Tejas MK2 and MK. For Su-30 MKI's fleet, the Uttam AS radar and X-band towed decoy system are also required towards which the Air Force has to also start focusing. This system along with HBJ or ASPJ in future along with DRWR-118 will make Su-30 MKIs a powerful killing machine for which neither Pakistan nor China will have an answer. This was today's update. Please let us know what is your views about these in comment section. Feel free to post your comments and suggestions about any topic related to defense sector on which you want to hear from us. With this, I would like to say goodbye and Jai Hind friends. Please like and subscribe our video if you have not done already. We will be soon back with more interesting and amazing development happening in defense sector.